What are you afraid of? <coughs> Some of us were programmed across the years to try and be all macho and say, I ain't afraid of nothing. I'm careful and cautious, but I'm not afraid. Wrong. We're all afraid of something. Often, a whole lot of somethings. And if our past has been in any way hampered by our fears, then maybe that's something we need to think about as we enter into a new year. Millions of people have diagnosable phobias. I do. I confess it. In fact, I have a couple of them. One is called musophobia. It's a fear of rats or mice. I would sooner pick up a snake than a mouse. One of the reasons I often ride the bus instead of the subway is that subways have rats. Sometimes they carry pieces of pizza up and down the steps. Two or three times I have seen them on the landings where I stood waiting for a train. Now how do I know that those animals won't confuse my ankle for a piece of pizza? After all, they have squinty little eyes and tiny brains. I don't like rodents. Another phobia I have is called acrophobia. That's a fear of heights. I don't do Ferris wheels or roller coasters. I don't bungee jump either, nor can I understand why anyone on planet Earth would ever want to. I don't even ride in glass elevators. The Grand Canyon? <laughs> Count me out. Just send me a postcard when you get there. Lots of people have phobias. Let's see, there's dytanophobia, that's a fear of dinner parties, and selenophobia, that's a fear of the moon, and cholerophobia, that's a fear of clowns. Stephen King gave that one to a lot of people in the book It. There's also something called cloophobia, which is a fear of newspapers. In this day and age, in our kind of world, it's hard to imagine not having at least a touch of that one. Every new day, we wake up afraid of what might appear on the headlines, from the savage murders committed by ISIS to the savage murders committed by deranged people with guns in theaters or schools or churches or government buildings. We're afraid of illness. We're afraid of going broke. We're afraid of losing our jobs or marriages. We're afraid of being laughed at or ostracized because of who we are or how we look. I ain't afraid of nothing. Anyone who says that is bluffing you. We're all afraid of something. So, what does our faith say about the fears that too often bind us? How about this word which was written about Jesus? Jesus, who was called the light of the world. Anyway, the Gospel of John says, a light shines in our darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Or, what about this word Jesus said about himself? Fear not, for I have overcome the world. Jesus is bigger and stronger and more lasting than anything or anyone which has us frightened. Those things come and go. He comes and stays. The fact is, the things that scare us are rarely serious threats. No subway rat has ever mistaken me for a piece of pizza, and no clown has ever tried to harm anyone I know. And even the threats that are real are also temporary. Herod the Great was scary for a while, but he eventually disappeared. The same was true of Nero and Caligula and Hitler, and Mussolini, and Idi Amin, and the Inquisition, and Stalin, and Al Capone, and the same will be the case with ISIS or Boko Haram. They come for a while, they frighten and disrupt, but in time, they disappear. Meanwhile, God, and goodness, and kindness, and human mercy, and the presence of Jesus come and stay. He is with us, and He is bigger than whatever has us frightened. Think about these two questions. First, what, in your opinion, are the most frightening things we experience globally, nationally, personally? Second, how do you think our faith speaks specifically 
to each source of fear that you named. I'll see you next week on Soul Purpose.